Man is the only creature that consumes without producing. He does not give milk. He does not lay eggs. He is too weak to pull the plow. He cannot run fast enough to catch rabbits. Yet he is lord of all animals. He sets them to work. He gives back to them the bare minimum that they will, uh, that will prevent them from starving. And the rest he keeps for himself. Our labor tills the soil, our dung fertilizes it, and yet not one of us owns more than his bare skin. You cows I see before me, how many thousands of gallons of milk have you given during this last year? And what has happened to that milk which should have been for breeding up sturdy calves? Every last drop of it gone down the throats of our enemies. And you hens, how many eggs have you laid in the last year? And how many of those eggs ever hatched into chickens? The rest have all gone to market to bring money to Jones and his men. And you, Clover, where are those four fowl you bore? Who should have been, who should have been support and pleasure to you in your old age? Each one sold at a year old. You will never see one of them again. In return for your four confinements and all your labors in the field, what have you ever what what have you ever expected but your bare rations and your stall? And even the miserable lives we lead are not allowed to reach their natural span. For myself I do not grumble. I am one of the lucky ones. I'm twelve years old and have had four hundred children. Such is the natural life of a pig. But no animal escapes the cruel knife in the end. You young porkers who are sitting in the front row before me, every last one of them will scream your lives out at the block within a year. To that horror, we all must, we all must come together. Cows, pigs, hens, sheep, everyone. Even the horses and the dogs have no better fate. You boxer, the very, the very day that great muscle of yours loses their power, muscles of yours, loses its power, Jones will sell you to the knacker, who will cut your throat and boil you down for fox hunting. As for the dogs, when they grow old and toothless, Jones ties a brick around their neck and throws them in the nearest pond. Ah, uh, what a way to start the debate conversation. Marcus Conti reporting. So I watched the debate last night. Let me get a set up here and uh, talk about it. It's uneventful. I hope I'm funny today because there's really nothing special about what was going on in that debate. La ah, la la la. Beautiful day in New York City. Ah, Marcus Conti reporting. How are you, man? So I sat and watched the debate. What was Orwell talking about? I guess let that overshadow the discussion because, because that's why we watch a presidential debate. That's why we elect leaders, people to get out in front of us and say, hey man, you stole my eggs. Those are my eggs. I, I produce that shit and you take it. Right? It's the 99% of the people controlled by one guy on a farm. Right? In that case, in the case of Animal Farm. And why do we tolerate it? Why do we, why do we, I mean, as human beings, obviously we have a little bit more than the skin on our back. But we only have enough to keep working. Because if, if all we had was the skin on our back, we couldn't be, we wouldn't be productive enough to produce for the oligarchs. So they give us a little more. That's all we are, really. You know, do we end up on the cutting block in the end? I don't know. They say that uh, wealthy people live longer now. You heard? They got like an extra 10 year life expectancy. Well, you remember that Rockefeller guy that his heart gave out and he went to Africa? And he chopped out some African's heart. <laughs> that's just a, that's a conspiracy theory. But the guy was a frequent flyer to a hospital in, I think, the Congo. The Rockefeller guy, the guy who lived to 100 years old. They claimed he had seven uh, heart surgeries. 
He did everything he could to get that last breath. <laughs> right? If it means chopping out someone's heart to use his heart for just a little longer, he'll do it. Right? But you and I, sorry. You get one shot and you're out. Right? So so I watched the debates last night. You know, it was, it was hard to stay awake, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I watched it. I mean, I... I found the first half hour was all about Medicare for all. I'll give you the winners and losers what I thought. I'll try to sum it up. I don't want, I don't want to go too long on this because it's it's not um, I don't think everybody's awake yet. So even if someone like um, Joe Biden has his foot in his mouth the whole time it's not going to really matter because the masses are not paying attention yet. You're paying attention obviously because you're watching this and I'm paying attention because I'm making this. But most of the people in the, in the world right now are not really paying attention to the election in the United States. Uh, so, uh, but nonetheless, we still got to watch it. So last night was the third Democratic National debate. It was in Texas. It was a big audience, too. It looked like there was a couple of, I don't know, like, um, I don't know, a couple of hundred people, maybe even a thousand. A big audience. Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, so and it was a live audience. It had a live raucous feeling behind it, right? And um, so, who's the big winner? Right? So we want to hear. It's a, it's actually boring, right? I was bored. I was bored by the cliches. Look, the first half hour was a discussion of Medicare for all, right? There's nobody who who wins that conversation other than the guy. Who wrote the damn bill? And that's Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders wrote the damn bill on Medicare for All. He's been screaming it when nobody else would scream it. So he obviously wins the conversation. Whether he's having a good night, bad night, indifferent night. Bernie looked a little tired. He had a sore throat. He looked like he looked old and tired. He looked like he couldn't hear. He looked like he couldn't see. It was like, <laughs> but it doesn't matter, right? Because it's not a fucking talent show. It's not a battle of. It's not, I mean, if it's supposed to be a, uh, you've got Joe Biden up there saying, how are you going to pay for it? Right? He's talking, he's talking all of the Fox News Republican talking points on Medicare for all. How are you going to pay for it? And he cites the number $30 trillion over 50 years or whatever the stupid number is. But he negates the fact that when you have Medicare for all, you bring the cost of everything down. All people are covered. People are living a better life. It's actually, it's, you could probably do cover everybody at half the price, but he's a liar. He's he's not for it. He's for Obamacare. Uh, so so nobody wins that argument. Anybody else that wants to interject, even Elizabeth Warren, who was rather crystal clear, very, very crisp, and very uh, sure of herself. But again, as I've demonstrated before, Elizabeth Warren is a turncoat. She voted to, just one example, recently, is to fund, uh, you know, fund the military industrial complex, you know, for Trump, give him whatever he wants and sign it, and then turn around and say, oh, no, no, I, I think we should uh, uh, decrease the military budget. But you just voted for it, right? You just voted for it, and that's the big line of the night. Bernie Sanders, right, said, quote, I am the only one up here who voted against all three of Trump's military budgets. That's leadership. You don't say, I want to, I think we should decrease the military budget and then vote for it. Vote to increase it. It just makes no sense. But most people don't see that. They see, well, if she could have done something, she would have done it. No. If you want to do something, vote. Vote the conscious, conscience of the people. What's so hard about that? 535, right? 535. That's the number. You've got four, 435 Congress and 100 Senate and one executive branch, one president. If you could switch it out, we can get all the laws we need in this country to fix everything, right? Deep state. You could, you could eliminate the FBI and the CIA in one, in one vote. If all Congress and all Senate, you see how easy, you see how we have a system that it can work for the people? But it doesn't because of the money interest, because the politicians vote against you and vote with the corporate interest. 
right? That's what's going on. You know, so what we're seeing is, we're seeing up there, we're seeing one individual that has the idea for Medicare for All, for example, with Bernie Sanders. And then you're seeing nine conflicting ideas some opposed, some against, some half opposed, some half against. But the reality is, I wrote the damn bill. So Bernie Sanders wins the night on Medicare, of course. So Beto O'Rourke had a decent night, but he's, he's, uh, his whole victory last night was about gun grabbing in Texas. Apparently he became the big gun grabber down in Texas now because of the, the uh, El Paso, Texas shooter, because he's from Texas. So he's down there rallying to take away your gun. All assault rifles. Ban on all assault rifles. Ban on, on guns. Right? Violate your first, uh, your Second Amendment right for his political gain. <laughs> Still believing it's the gun. Uh, it's bad judgment. Uh, that's bad judgment. Even I know that. I mean, I, who am I? I'm just some jerk off in a park, right? Walking around. I can fi- How come I can figure that out? And Beto, Beto O'Rourke, the stork, can't figure it out. He's got a great voice, though. Oh man, Beto O'Rourke. If I had that voice, oh my God. If I had, if I had all six feet of that guy's like six seven. He's huge. If I had that size and that voice, oh man, you think I'm arrogant now? <laughs> you know how fucking arrogant I would be if I. Nah, nah. I'd be, I'm proud of who I am. I love who I am, man. I kiss myself. I kiss myself every day, man. It's great to be alive, man. It's just, that's what it's all about. Want to see my bridge? Want to see the bridge? Hello, bridge. Connect me to the other side. Make my connection. So that's really all we're looking for is a connection. So Andrew Yang, great night. Oh, fucking Andrew Yang. Love it, man. Andrew Yang with his freedom dividend. Give everybody... When he said it, the people, the first thing he said in his opening statement, all the other candidates, excuse me. I know you guys hate when I do that, but I can't walk around with, with phlegm in my throat. I forgot what I was saying. Oh, so Yang, 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 Yang. When he said his freedom dividend, giving money to the people so that they can help themselves and, and, and get, you know, stay debt free. And the jerk-off to his left and the jerk-off to his right politicians laughed at him. <laughs> you heard him go, <laughs> it's a novel idea. You even heard him over say it <coughs> on the hot mics. Jerk-offs, right? Because it's a great idea. Why you could, But when you say, let's give, uh, let's give Exxon Mobil uh, $68 billion a year for, no, uh, for absolutely no reason, that they sign on to. But giving people money so that they could buy their kids, you know, school books and, you know, and fucking, you know, boots for the winter. No, 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 I can't do that. You can't do that because that's socialism. <laughs> I say Andrew Yang was wonderful. He's got them all running on that, that freedom dividend thing. It's a great, great thing. Uh, Julian Castro, he went after Biden. He's an attack dog. He has no policy. He has no, there's no substance to... Julian Castro, the Spanish-speaking man who worked with Obama. Who whenever, whatever, whatever good Obama did, then Castro loves Obama. But whenever there's something that Castro didn't do, oh, fucking, I don't know, he was the president. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, he just told me what to do and I did it. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't make the decision. But when the decision was right, oh, I was right behind him. I was in the room leading with him. So Castro and Biden are the same animal in that respect. They're, they're sucking, they're, they're snuggling under Obama, Obama's ball sack, right? They each, they're under each, uh, Biden is under one ball and Castro's under the other ball. And they're, they're, they're holding up Obama's ball sack. <laughs> right? That's what they are. They're fucking ball, they're ball sack boys. Camilla Harris Look, no Obama. She she had rehearsed one-liners. They were horrible. They all flopped. Right, they're fucking. They're trying comedy. The, the, the bitch is trying comedy, comedy at your expense, and it flopped. Right, so she's she's a nobody. She still can't defend her record of being a horrible attorney general in the state of California. 
she still gets hit for that. She just doesn't have the character, in my view. The, she doesn't have the, the star power. She seems, she comes off to me as arrogant, as conceited. Well, well, I'm, you don't know who I am. You don't know what I did in California. I don't give a fuck. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta inspire me if you can't speak to me. Because I don't know you. I don't know you. Who the fuck are you, man? I don't know you. Who are you? <laughs> so Camilla Harris, and she's against Medicare for all, so she fails, right? You're on the wrong side of history. Right? The people want it. The people need it, and you're, you're not on the right side of history. So uh, Pete Buttigieg, pff, I can't even remember what he said. Again, I was struggling to stay awake. I, had, I was in the, like, you know, you know when, you, when you fall, when you nod off and you, you snap out of it? But, but I was like, I, I fell asleep one time. And I woke up, you know, dribbled down my face. I didn't know what day, I didn't know what time it was. I must have been out for like, you know, 10 minutes. You know, when you're just sitting in a chair and fall asleep and like, I didn't, I had, that's how, that's how devastatingly potent the sleep, <laughs> the boringness was of the debate. So if you didn't watch it, you didn't miss anything, really. So Peter Buttigieg said really nothing. He's very articulate. He's very... He's very uh, smart in a gay way. Oh, I'm Pete Buttigieg. I'm the mayor of Illinois, Indiana, where the fuck you from? I'm a mayor somewhere, and, and I'm gonna. And he's very articulate, but he doesn't know the words. And I'm not moved by the words. That's why Bernie Sanders wins. Although Bernie Sanders looked tired and a little crazy, he looked like crazy Bernie up there. So, so, what do you want? Personality? You said just vote for Trump. Then you're good. If you want the if you want the 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 country to change and move in a progressive direction, then that's your guy. It's just that simple, right? If you want to get money out of politics, well, that's just he's the guy. You want to take on the banks, he's the guy. You want to reduce the military industrial complex and the 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 military budget and stop having kids go off and and die in senseless. You know, counterinsurgency wars that don't benefit us. We don't have a real enemy. Well, Bernie Sanders is your guy. What's the problem? That's how he. That's how he is. That's how he votes. Why? He's got to be charismatic, and he's got to be. You know, the guy's pushing seventy-seven years old. He's gonna. He's. He's giving his whole fucking life for this. It's very admirable if you follow the story of the of the man. I like I said. I don't care if Bernie Sanders. Is the nominee? You could wheel Bernie fucking Sanders out in a wheelchair, right? With it, with it, with a IV and a, a dialysis machine and in, in tow and and a fucking and, and dribble down his face in the pajamas. I'll still vote for Bernie Sanders. I walk into the, the I walk in proudly and say, "Poop, Bernie Sanders." That's where it's at, man. Right, you call me a sellout. Call me whatever you want. Because he stands at the policy. Don't you get it, man? It's not a fucking talent show. It's not about... About... Um, uh, you know, all these you know beautiful pictures. Like making America great again. And draining the swamp. And, and we're going to lower your taxes. Right? You're not going to do anything, right? We're going to lock her up. You know? We're going to build a wall. Uh, if you fall for all that shit, the charismatic, you know, charismatic man with the orange hair from New York, the, 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 you know, Bernie Sanders. Who else? Cory Booker, zero. I mean, he's a vote for me guy. That there was nothing to it, no substance whatsoever. Amy Klobuchar, she's healthcare. She fails on healthcare. Public. She wants the public option. Um. They were all gun grabbers. I gotta tell you, that's if you're if you're a strong uh, advocate or believer in the Second Amendment, then the Democrats need to change their tune because they're all about this. They're all about this gun grab, right? That the guns are causing the violence, and oh my God, the children. They always go for the children. Oh my God, the children are gonna die because of the guns. In a country of 330 million people, I think we're doing pretty good. And um, although I live in New York City where there is really no, you're not allowed to carry a gun. You carry a gun, you get, especially if it's loaded, uh, it's, it's a very, very bad crime. 
very hard to possess a, a, a firearm, a, a something that you can carry with you. Uh, but nonetheless, I have a choice. I can leave. I can move to an open carry state, which I think about all the time. <laughs> I would love that, man. Go down to fucking Texas. And I get two guns. I have one on each side, man. Fucking walk around like a badass motherfucker. I'm surprised more people don't do that in open carry areas. Uh, but again, I don't know the psychology. Is that is that frowned upon if you're in like uh, Alabama where you can open carry? Why don't people exercise that right and do it? Why don't you have? Why doesn't everybody walk around with a gun on their hip? I don't know. So, so that's it. So who's the big winner? I got to give it to Sanders again out of out of the sheer the sheer fact that. He's leading the discussion. He's it's him to beat. Now the corporate the corporate view is Biden. When Bernie Sanders says give people you know health care and college tuition, the, the, the corporate scumbag says, Biden, how are you gonna pay for it? Right? That's just a, that's just so disgusting to to even hear him say that. Uh, so so that's it on the that's it on the debate. Marcus Conti reporting on that shit. Maybe we'll do something else. I got something, a couple of things planned. So the LARPers are, whoa, what a dust-up, right? These fucking guys are crazy, man. Hey, listen, man. Sometimes, you know, you got you, you to gotta exterminate the motherfuckers, right? <laughs> what you got to do? They're like insects, man. They're fucking overtaking your kitchen. I had roaches running around in the kitchen. You got to fucking kill those bastards, right? You know, one or two is no big deal. But then they're fucking, they're trying to, they're, they're eating your fucking meal. You go in, you go... You take the cover off your meal and they're eating your meal. I gotta fucking kill these bastards. Step on them. So, uh, so anyway, it's, uh, what's today? It's, uh, I think it's Friday. Friday in New York. Friday in New York. I don't know what kind of events are happening this weekend. I don't usually look at that until the weekend. Maybe I'd do some walkie talkie in the, uh, walkie talkie around the city, see some, some new stuff. And, uh, we'll see what's going on, man. Marcus Conte reporting.